So now some of the interventions in your therapy involve concreteness training. Can you describe to us how do you do that exactly with your patient? So we would be emphasizing, emphasizing all of those elements about paying attention to the detail of the situation, the context, potentially perceptual, and the sequence of what happened and then how you can move forward. And usually it goes through a couple of phases. So um, what we often do is try and get some experience that illustrates uh, experientially to people that there's a difference between these styles of thinking. So we'll do a, often we do a behavioral experiment where, where having talked through a couple of situations where someone ruminates, I'll have noted down the kind of questions they're asking themselves, their why questions or their meaning questions. And then we'll get them to imagine the situation again and prompt them with those questions and see how they feel uh, and, and how they, you know, whether they're making active plans or not. And then we, as a second part of the experiment, we'll get them to imagine the same situation again. But this time I prompt them with some more of those how questions, like so how did it happen? How can you do something about it? But, and then get them to rate again how they're feeling and, and how much they've made plans. And often, even just doing that, people in the session get a sense of, oh yeah, I'm actually being a bit more positive here, or I'm able to be a bit more active here. So we're giving a, a very quick indication in the experiment that there may be a shift between thinking. And, and that gives some motivation for them to go and then practice doing a more kind of formal version of that, where we spell out the elements. Um, and get them to practice it. And again, we we've often try and link that to the warning signs of, of, of cues to rumination or to difficult situations. So often we ask people to think, we might practice it in the session where we get people to recall a recent event that was a bit upsetting. Not too upsetting because it's easiest to practice it on a milder event to start with. Uh -huh. and, then, and, and then practice going through and focusing on the details and talking through the sequence and thinking how they might do it. And, and there's a sort of you know standardized set of prompts that you might give people and get them to practice that in the session and then they would have a recording of that that they could go off and practice um, and the recording would be of the prompts themselves to uh, remind yourself to ask yourself yeah. so yeah. what happened imagine, imagine the situation and then working through the prompts Imagine the situation. So in the session, you might have the person imagine a situation like, oh, I just had a disagreement with my teenage daughter. Yeah. And so now uh, I'm going to walk through these this particular set of prompts that Dr. Watkins just gave me. One is, let me focus on what happened and let me focus on the details in time of what happened first and then what happened second and then what happened next. And I'm going to walk through all those. And then I'm going to ask myself, is there anything I could do? Would those yeah. be the kind of prompts you'd oh, be? Yeah, so, so noticing the detail of what was happening and then uh -huh. noticing how did this happen? What was the, how can I do, do something about it? What's, what's, how can I get started on doing something about it? Those kinds of prompts. I mean, typically the first time we would do it, we'd get the person to describe the situation. So then the therapist can actually not just prompt generically, but prompt more specifically. So yes. You know, if you know that it's an that the, the, the situation was an argument with a, a teenage uh, daughter, then you 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 want to know what did you say and what yes. did, and how did you say it and what was the tone of voice and who where did you say it and all of those so you could prompt them the first couple of times with a bit more detail so they get a sense of what they're trying to get to. Uh, and then the other thing we would do, we would do in therapy is we keep coming back to that. So when someone's describing a situation. Having introduced the distinction between being more concrete and being more abstract, you might actually say to someone, yeah, you're describing the situation, but it sounds to me like you're still talking about it in quite a, an abstract way. Can we try and get more, more detail from, from that? So we, we encourage therapists to keep sort of trying to drill down to, to more detail. And, and sort of the rule of thumb is, can you imagine, can, can you get a mental picture of what the person is telling you? Ah, yes, you talk about, imagine it as if it was a movie. And yeah. so if your patient is talking to you about a situation where you cannot get any visual image or movie of what happened, then you, it's a kind of a cue to you and the patient. It's too abstract. Is that yeah. accurate? Yeah, something like that. And, and also, can you, can you get it down to the exact behavior? So I mean, often people use terms that are already quite abstract. So they'll yeah. say, um, you know, this person you know, insulted me. Well, I have no idea right. what, what actually happened. Right. Something, 
uh, did, did they make a gesture? You know, right. So then, you want to, then that's kind of a cue to say, okay, just tell me what actually you know happened. You want to be able to see the person's behaviors and other people's behaviors. 